So we like to give a lot of prizes and we like to incentivize people coming here. So we have, you can't really tell from the camera on my computer, but the room around me is stock full of gifts. Yeah, you can see we've got, um, we've got some cooking items, non-electric cooking items. We've got something I call it like a zombie apocalypse kit. We've got cooking sets, tumblers. We've got a cook stove. All of these are things that we think will be useful for people when the power goes out. And, and if we're ever thrust into a situation like we were last year. So what we're gonna be doing is, it's gonna be very video heavy. So I hope, I hope you don't mind watching videos, which probably beats having to listen to me jabber all night. But we're gonna take breaks and do some of these drawings for these prizes. And since we have way more prizes than we do people who, or who are participating in this, pretty much everyone participating will win something. And I wanna say out the gate that we do have a bunch of seed kits and gross, oh. grocery bags that we plan on giving out, yeah. Yeah, so again, this goes back to you know, self-sufficiency. This goes back to having a food source when, you're, when your power goes out. We've got seed kits, we've got sprouting lids. A lot of these are gonna be available for picket for pickup at Iska Muckmuck House. Oh, and what's this? Oh, this is a grow bag. Yeah, this is a grow bag. So made out of recycled plastic, I assume. So we pretty much have one for everyone who participates in this. You do have to come by Iskum to pick it up, but we will have we will have one of these for everyone. But we thought it would be good if we started out with some prizes just right out of the gate so people know that we're serious. And do it with the people who are on right now. Yeah, yeah, why not? Why not? Are, so are those guaranteed to be people who are on? Um, I don't think uh, Gerald or Michael, Michael Langley are oh. in here yet. That's okay. I don't know how Michael Langley got an invite, but um, just kidding, I invited him. Um, he lives across the street from me. So we're going to go ahead. And so we do have initially, we've got two $25 gift cards to Grocery Outlet. So I'm going to pull out a name. And we had, I think, 33, 35 registrants for the event this evening. And the first one to win a $25 grocery outlet gift card is, I know her, Maria Ramirez. So congrats, Maria. And if you're not, if you, if you haven't logged on, I know you work here, I see you all the time. So we'll, we'll make sure to communicate that to her. And before, before I go on, are there any comments or questions from people? You should have the ability to unmute yourself. No, not hearing any? Okay, so the first video. Yahoo! Okay, thank you. Thank you, Debbie. It's always <laughs> good to have a cheerleading section. <laughs> thank you. So we're gonna show the first video. Um, this is from Chris Scadden. He works for Oregon State University and he is very good. He did a video last year called the Food Hero video. He actually is bilingual too. So he does cooking videos in Spanish as well for those of you who watched it last year. But here's, here's a video for some food that I don't think it requires any cooking actually. It's just the assembling of ingredient of ingredients and we're going to play that for you his nickname is the food hero and here we go can you all hear that okay hello everyone i'm christopher scatton with oregon state university extension service food hero foodhero.org and I have a recipe for you today that is perfect for uh, those emergency situations when the lights go out. This is uh, doesn't need to be refrigerated really. Um, it does say keep it cool but we're going to go ahead and do it anyway. I have all my ingredients here. It's called the cranberry oatmeal balls and I have all my ingredients here and I have some changes of what the recipe says. I have my oatmeal about one cup. I have a third cup of actually crushed walnuts and this is how I crush them. I take my knife and I go like this. I lay them on a cutting board and then I just crush them up 
and there they are, and they do that. I have one third cup of peanut butter. I have three tablespoons of honey, and I have a third cup of dried dates. Now, it does call for cranberries in the recipe, but it's an emergency, and I'm using what I have in my pantry. So here's how we're gonna do this. Basically, all I do is I take the bowl, I put all the ingredients in, one oatmeal, uh, my crushed walnuts, my peanut butter, which is gonna be a little harder to get out of here. Let me get my spoon. And I'm gonna do that with it. Scoop out all that good peanut butter. Yeah, and, and just have some of these. These are staples that usually most people have in their pantries, you know, peanut butter, honey, that kind of thing. I'm gonna do the honey. Remember, honey is not good for children under one years old, but we're gonna use it in our recipe today. I'm just gonna put that in there, scoop that out. It's always sticky and you know, you get honey everywhere when you use honey. It seems like it's always everywhere. Okay, there we go. And that's the three tablespoons. And then I have my dried dates, one third cup. And I throw them in. These are the dried dates are, of course, if you have cranberries or you have, uh, oh, I don't know, um, raisins, that kind of thing. Perfect for this recipe. Anything that's a dried fruit will work in this recipe. Now I'm using my spoon here and I'm noticing, by the way, I did wash my hands before this. Uh, usually we'd like to encourage you to wash your hands thoroughly before, uh, before doing this recipe because I am going to use my hands to form the balls uh, you know, to, to have later. So there we go. My spoon just doesn't want to cooperate as well. So I'm going to just use my hands. And oh boy, is it a gooey, missy, sticky thing here. But it's fun. You can always get the kids to help you with this too. It's a fun recipe for the kids to help make. And we just mix it all up with our hands. We just use my hand here. It's getting on my hand. There's some uh, tips and tricks to doing this. You can put a little bit of stuff on your hands to keep them from being so sticky, uh, a little bit of water or that kind of thing. I'm just going for it because that's the way I roll, food hero. So I'm gonna do this and get some of this off my hand here. And I'm gonna do this. You can also uh, use other nut butters. You don't have to use peanut butter. You can use other nut butters like sunflower seed butter, or, uh, uh, almond butter, those kinds of things. It doesn't necessarily have, like we like all recipes with foodhero.org, you kind of use what you have sometimes and you just do the best you can, especially in an emergency. So here we go. Oh boy, this sounds really good. I'm just gonna make it like this. Okay, so it is messy. So now I'm going to start making the balls, uh, the little the little balls. I just take a little handful of it. And I form the balls the best I can in my hands here. And the recipe there. They're probably prettier than the ones I'm doing here. And I'm just putting them in uh, in a little container here that's gonna go in the refrigerator. Uh, if your refrigerator is out, which sometimes it happens in an emergency, always keep the door closed because you can keep a lot of the cold in, or you can put these somewhere else. They're just uh, a simple, easy recipe. So I'm gonna form, it says the recipe forms about 16 of these little uh, two tablespoon balls. Um, we'll see, sometimes I like mine a little bit bigger. You might like them a little bit smaller. And you just form those up. Hopefully we can do that. Okay, and I'm gonna do that. Oh boy. All right, and that's the recipe. It's that easy. You just make these balls and you uh, cool them down for a little bit or you can eat them right away. But uh, if you put them in the refrigerator, let them cool for just a little, a little bit. Once again, if the power's out, you know, just keep that door closed to the refrigerator and make sure that you, that you uh, keep these cool. They just need to be cool, not necessarily uh, solid cold and that kind of thing, so. All right, well, that's my recipe for today. Thanks for watching. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, go finish doing this and you have a great time. Remember, when the lights go out, cranberry oatmeal balls. Thanks.
<clears throat> All right. <clears throat> well, that seems like a pretty, pretty straightforward recipe and ideal for that kind of situation like we were in back in February and probably pretty healthy, probably healthier than I, I normally eat anyway. So, <clears throat> so I, I feel um, like we've got a lot of prizes to give away. <laughs> hey, Chris. Yeah. Just before we do that, um, I just want to mention another another trick to keep it from gathering on your hands like it was on mine. I just like to just remind people a little bit of olive oil or vegetable oil just on your hands at the beginning that helps them to be slick so that it doesn't all stick to your hands like it was doing to mine. Mm -hmm. So that's another another trick there. So. Okay. Thank you, Chris. So. <clears throat> I'll rely on my assistant maybe to pick out a gift that we can give away here. I want, I'd like to do uh, the one of the bear farms. One of the bear farms. Okay. And where, where is, where is bear farms again? In Willamina. In Willamina. Okay. Uh -huh. And they're a CSA. They, um, I believe they do have a CSA, but they also have a roadside stand. Okay. Okay. So you so, can, you can go on their website. You can place an order. They can have it all set up for you in their roadside stand for pickup. And you can pay with cash, check, okay. or card. Okay, so Bear Farms, Willamina, B-A-R-E. -E, um, and we have two $25 gift certificates for them. And they have a website. You understand? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So the first person to win a $25 gift certificate to Bear Farms is, I know that I know this woman. This is Shayla, Shayla Myrick Meyer. <laughs> All right, congratulations, Shayla. Okay. I'm going to keep these over by me. Okay. So I can write them down. And should we do another one? Sure. Let's, let, you want to choose a different prize? Um, yeah, yeah. Why don't we? Why don't we do the um, espresso? Oh, the little coffee thing. Okay. Uh, the coffee and the tumbler. Okay, sure. Is that okay. like a combined yeah, gift? Yeah, let's or? just do a little. Okay, little that's fine. Combined. That's fine. Okay, so. So can I show them off? Okay. Oh, you want this? Yeah. So again, not relying on electricity. I know that we have a lot of coffee aficionados here in the Grand Ronde community. So yeah, Veronica Gaston's nodding her head. So this, I have one of these too. I've taken it camping. It's a little espresso maker. You just put the espresso in here, water in here, and it percolates through. Very good, you make very good espresso. If you're out camping and you absolutely have to have espresso, there's, there's your means right there. And a brand new Coleman tumbler. So this will be kind of a, a combined gift for people. And we're gonna draw the name on that right now. You wanna win this one, Veronica? <laughs> okay. So, and I know this lady as well, Dell Dickinson. I believe she lives down in the Eugene area. I don't, I don't know if you're on or not, Dell. But if you aren't, we will reach out to you and let you know you want a new uh, Machina Espresso and a Coleman Tumbler. Okay, so that is the first round of gifts. And we have another video that I'm gonna share. This one comes courtesy of Oregon State University. And this is a video on microgreens. And um, yeah, microgreens, not a very popular name out here in Grand Ronde. Only a few people will get that joke, but I'm gonna go ahead and play this. <laughs> Some people in the room got it. <laughs> I'm going to play this video. Hi, I'm Brooke Edmonds. I'm OSU Extension's community horticulturist in Marion and Polk counties. I oversee the Master Gardener Volunteer Program, as well as community education related to sustainable gardening and landscaping in both counties. The Master Gardener Volunteer Program is one of my favorite parts of my job. Our mission is to cultivate resilient and healthy communities throughout Oregon through sustainable horticulture education and gardening projects that are rooted in science 
and that are supported by OSU Extension volunteers. Each year, we provide gardening education and volunteer training to folks from across Oregon. Each county offers a training class based on a statewide curriculum. We provide education on the basics of sustainable gardening, covering topics like soils, botany, vegetable gardening, insects, and more. In recent years, we have also developed key program priorities and are focusing our offerings on native plants, climate change, local foods, adaptive and accessible gardening, soil health, and the cultural connection to the garden. If you are interested in becoming a Master Gardener volunteer, I encourage you to visit our website for applications. These open each fall for the next year's class. Each county has unique volunteer opportunities depending on that community's need. In Marion and Polk counties, our major outreach efforts are through our help desks and our demonstration gardens. The Master Gardener Help Desk is a place to get your gardening questions answered by trained volunteers. We are at each county extension office, and you'll also find us at pop-ups at community events and farmers markets. You can always call, email, or stop by the extension office. We will research your question and provide a detailed answer within a few days. Community education is the other major effort of the Master Gardener Volunteer Program. Each county has at least one demonstration garden. This is where our volunteers put what they have learned into practice. These spaces also serve as our outdoor classrooms to teach public gardening classes. We host many different classes and workshops throughout the year. For example, in 2022, we're already planning for fruit tree pruning demonstrations, vegetable planting, composting techniques, tips for increasing pollinator habitat, growing more perennial plants and more. These photos are of the Inspiration Garden in Polk County, which is in a city park in Independence. This garden borders Ash Creek and includes a riparian restoration demonstration too. An upcoming class that you may be interested in is on getting started with microgreens. This is an online class with short videos and daily tips to get you growing nutritious microgreens in two weeks. It's a low cost, fun, and tasty project that can be done at home or in a classroom. No outdoor garden is needed. A bright window or under a lamp is perfect. Our partner, Food Hero, has delicious microgreens recipes too. Registration is free and will open in January, so check the Extension website to sign up. Thank you for listening. I hope next time that we can do this in person, and I'm always available. If you have gardening questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. I will leave you with my contact information and the very best wishes for a successful garden in 2022. All right. Well, it's not a coincidence that we shared that video and that link at the same time that we're giving away all these little microgreen sprouting kits. We, we urge people to take advantage of these local resources and we urge people to take advantage of what we're offering here. Before I, before I get into another prize, um, Chris or Carly, did, did either of you have anything you wanted to add? to um, that video. Yeah, I think, thanks, Chris. That's great. Hi, everybody. I'm Carly, work at OSU Extension. I work with Brooke, um, but in a different program. And I just wanted to share um, the microgreens course. You can access it right now. We're going to be sending out um, some details in the, the a PowerPoint slide afterwards. So there's a registration link in there. Um, but what I really wanted to share with you is that there are Everybody who is attending can go pick up uh, seeds. I think Chris, you mentioned this earlier, can go pick up seeds and soil and the seed sprouting kits. So there are microgreen seeds in there, but there are also lots of other seeds too. So I encourage you to go uh, 
to ISCOM uh, McMuck House and pick those up uh, whenever you can. Right. That's it. Thanks, Chris. Cool. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, so we, we still have a big, big uh, pile of prizes that we need to start putting a dent into. So I'll rely upon my lovely assistant, even though she's a Washington Husky, Francine. Let's do another first aid kit. Okay, yeah, there we go. So we have a small first aid kit, again, in those emergency lights out, electricity out situations. Well, I don't know. First aid kit is just one of those things. Like when you when you need one, you realize, man, I need to have a good first aid kit. So this is great for your backpack or your car. Yeah, sixty five piece. And we have for that we have a Christina Walker, and I'm not sure if you're on or not, Christina. Okay. All right. Thank you. So yeah. So basically, we we had so many prizes that if you if you RSVP'd, whether or not you participate in the zoom we're still entering you into the drawing so christina walker we will alert her and then maybe we could uh look at one of these gift cards here maybe the so mama tees so mama tees is up off of willamina creek is that correct yeah so they're a local local community so supported agriculture csa right yep. yeah eggs year round. she has eggs year round so if you want if you want a box of fresh vegetables mama t's farm is one of those places where you can go to get that and we do have a 25 dollar gift certificate to mama t's and we are going to give that away to vale brettia brescia I have a feeling I know her. Britia Vale, and she works at the vale? preschool. Okay. <laughs> wow, I, I did really bad on that name, didn't I? Um, okay. Cool. Well, she, she gets a $25 gift certificate to Mama T's Farms. All right. So probably after this, we're really going to start giving away a lot of these gifts. So let me preface our next video by saying that last year, the video quality consisted, of, one video was just me using my iPhone and, and following people around the kitchen. I, th I thought it turned out okay, but you're gonna see a noticeable uptick in the quality of videos for our event. And we, we have two more videos. They are gonna be, one's gonna be 15 minutes and one's gonna be 19 minutes. So they are gonna be, a bit longer than normal. And whereas last year we had a video that was partially in Spanish, this next video is gonna be partially in Chinook because this was produced by our cultural resources guy, Jordan Mercier. This is about smoking salmon. I should also add that one of the programs that the tribe initiated, it was after the big ice storm, but I think you know, the benefit of it will be very useful is we, we started offering like a grant, a healthy eating grant for tribal members who wanted to partake of it. And one of the things that a lot of people I know bought was a smoker, smokers, air fryers. And just for the record, one of the gifts might be our last gift that we give away tonight will be an air fryer. It's, it's a nice one. But um, a lot of people got smokers. And while this video doesn't provide a precise recipe. I'm sure that we could get a good recipe from cultural resources, but it's a good way of showing how our tribe engages in a cultural practice. And every year we give out smoked salmon, just historically smoked salmon. Salmon in the Northwest among tribal people was a staple and it, it was something that they relied upon through the winter. So this is just, this is just a great video. It's, it's, you're going to love it very um you, you'll just feel the culture when you watch it so and there is chinook but don't worry there's there's subtitles <coughs>
nuksan sa chagu pus muk flu shu kwanat pus tamal and sa mitlai kya ga kabu tenis mukas be sa chagu pus scope kya ga be mitlai kya ga kabu go ka tenis ease off be uti be tenis koi make the wacht pus muk dread ogu pus tamal be tamal and sa chagu kilabai There's soy sauce and there's syrup in there. Yeah. They have like two, did they say 200 or 2,000 fish fillets? They got to smoke up for everybody? Soon. If I could take some sample packs on one thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hi, I'm Lisa Archuleta, and I just wanted to talk a little bit today. I'm up here at Natural Resources and came from Portland, where I work at the Portland Tribal Office, and came up today to work with Culture, um, Bobby, um, Tina, myself, Jordan, and Greg, my brother. We came up and uh, smoked some fish today, which was a really good day to be out and be out in this weather and be on a uh, reservation to do this. So we prepared three different kinds of brine today. Um, I've been smoking fish for probably well over 20 years um, at home, um, always experimenting with whatever ingredients I find, whether you like salty fish, whether you like sweet fish, um, you could put fresh herbs in there. Um, but it was a good day to do that, and we made three different kinds, and we did probably, I think, 80 fish, maybe, maybe more. <laughs> and so we did the process today of cutting it and brining it, and then it will soak in the brine overnight. Um, and then tomorrow we'll come back, and it'll be the longer day where we air dry it and then get it in the smoker um, and then get it to um, get it wrapped up make sure it's cooled off and get it wrapped and uh, hopefully soon you all get to taste some of it. So thank you. So we don't got no more ground pepper, but we got some flavoring. Salt. these out a little bit so they're not touching so that salt and sugar and stuff can get down in there. Yes, ma'am. Now it's magic time.
So today we're here and we're uh, preparing some fish for smoking. And um, this is one of our traditional activities that we would do. And of course, today we're doing it a lot different style than traditionally would do it. Traditionally, we had our plank houses and we had our cooking and we had our drying houses outside. They were different, different houses for doing the smoking of the fish drying things like the berries and things like that. Um, but uh, pretty similar in, in our traditional ways, we, we used to smoke a lot um, for drying the fish. We didn't have salt. Salt was fairly uncommon um, for the most part, but a few tribes did have access to some salt. Um, salt, uh, just little areas where they would find the salt. And um, so some of them may, would maybe use some of that. But for the most part, our tribes um, didn't use salt um, when smoking a fish. A lot of them was pretty much with the, uh, the wood and fire and the smoke to the house and the smoke houses. So they dry um, and smoke the fish. They would do um, stock wall, the eel. Um, that way, um, venison would be, would be smoke dried reserved for winter time. And then of course they had different methods too of for drying the berries and using fire, um, sunlight um, to dry the berries. And even some of the like canvas bulbs and things like that would be dried, uh, would be baked first and then they would be sun dried, mashed up into cakes and preserved. So a lot of the smoking and the drying was important for preserving the foods for winter time and then also for preserving foods that would be used in trade. Oh, <laughs> 
benefits of being the chef is, uh, you know, you can't serve these to people if they're bad. So. <laughs> yeah, these probably shouldn't serve these to anybody. But I think they're starting to turn already. Hold on. I gotta get one of these. Applause. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> applause in the room. Yeah. Thank you. I didn't do it. I had nothing to do with making it, but thank you anyway. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I am. So, so Francine had the idea because our next video is going to be our longest video. One of the things that we make is beef jerky. And I, it was my first time actually making beef jerky and I'd never I'd only heard of a jerky gun, but I'd never used a jerky gun. But since the jerky we make uh, is out of ground beef, we're, we're offering two jerky guns and spice mixtures as part of our prizes that we're giving away tonight. I did get an updated list because I, I noticed that we've had about five people join on in the last 20 minutes or so. So while that video was running, I, I clipped out some more names and added them to my little bowl here where I'm drawing all the names out of. So several of you who came on late, your odds of winning stuff has, the cool stuff has improved, I guess. So the first jerky gun and mix that we're gonna give away is to Debbie Bernando. We, we all know Debbie. <clears throat> Are you on, Debbie? I am Asi. I am. Okay. Um, I, I take it you're your game for making some your own homemade jerky. If I'm not, I know a lot of people who will. Okay. Okay. Good deal. Good deal. All right. So we have two more gift certificates that we're gonna draw for because after this, we got a whole lot of prizes that we got to give away here. So we have another $25 gift certificate for Bear Farms, which I explained earlier. And I'm gonna draw a name for that. And that will go to Josephine Ingram. And I'm pretty sure she's on or, or maybe not. Well, she planned on being on, but anyway, she's, she's winning a prize nonetheless. So yeah, I know, I know Josephine, very nice woman. And we have another, another $25 gift certificate for Grocery Outlet, which Michael Langley and some of my coworkers, they rib me a lot because it's my favorite place in the world to go shop for groceries. And because you never know what they're going to have there. They'll have something different every time. And that will go to, oh, <clears throat> I included everyone, including those of us who worked <laughs> Those of us who are helping host this, we don't get the prizes. 
we just get the glory, but we don't get any of the prizes. So, oh, well, what do you know? Another, another Bernando, Aaron Bernando. You get the $25 grocery outlet gift card. Sweet. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I, every time I see you, you're with your mom. So we can, uh, can deliver it to you both at the same time concurrently. Okay. So what do you think? Should I, should we do another one of these prizes behind us? Why don't we do, oh, we could do the other first aid kit too. Oh yeah. The other first aid kit. Okay. Here we go. A happy wander first aid kit. 134 pieces. Not sure what that means, but sounds impressive. And that's going to go to You know, if I hadn't met her, I would have totally butchered this name. But because I know her, I know her name's pronounced Simone Oje. And I think you just, I think she just joined us. Yes, I'm here. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you. And you're welcome for me pronouncing your name right. So Thank you. I know her. I know her. I'm not insulting her. <laughs> All right. So you get, you are the proud winner of this first aid kit, which when the lights go out and your power goes out. Great for your car. Yeah, great for your car. It's one of those things you'll really be happy that you have. Are there any comments or questions from people? I know, I know, like I said earlier, I know it's gonna be very video heavy, but um, since we're denied the interactive nature that we usually have with these community conversations, videos we just find go a long way, but I've been doing a lot of talking and I don't know if anybody had any comments or questions they wanted to interject. If not, I'll, I'll shut up and I'll the next video. I yes, just please. wanted to say Shayla won a prize before she joined, I think. So do we want to tell her what her prize was? No, she forfeited it. So <laughs> just kidding, kidding. She, she, won, she won a gift card, right? She won a $25. Yeah, I think it was to Berry Farms. Yeah. yeah. Am I saying right? Yeah, Shayla, you want a $25 gift certificate to Bear Farms. Right on. Thank you, guys. This is local. There you go. Okay. Well, if there's no comments or questions, I'm going to go ahead to our last video. It is it is a little longer than the rest. It's about, mm -hmm. it's about 19 minutes. And I, I have only watched part of it because it was just given to me about an hour before for our little community conversation here but we have a videographer here in the tribe who's very talented and what i saw was way better than my iphone camera video that i that i debuted last year and this one i'm not the star of it i'm just kind of an assistant cook the the chef star the star billing goes to flicka lucero who you'll see and we're going to make some beef jerky and we're going to make some fruit leather and you'll get to see a jerky gun in action. So let me pull that up. Good morning, good afternoon. I'm Chris Mercier. We're, well, we're not really live, but we're here in Grand Ronde and we're about to do a cooking demonstration. And this is part of our community conversation that we do at least once a year. It's kind of an alliance between us, Mary Polk Food Share, Oregon State University, and Iskum Muckmuck House. And our theme this year for our community conversation is when the lights go out. Because earlier this year, here in Grand Ronde, but also in the surrounding area, we were hit by a really bad ice storm. Electricity went out here in Grand Ronde proper, I guess you could say, for what, almost 48 hours? And, and probably where you live. Uh, eight days for us. Yeah, eight yeah. days down the road. So that got us thinking about 
how can we tackle food issues in those kind of emergency situations? And our idea was that we want to help people prepare to have foods that they can eat and consume when the electricity goes out. And maybe the only thing they have is like a little kerosene cooker. And so the point of this is just learning how to deal with your food issues when you're in an emergency situation like is what basically what we dealt with last February. So this lady to my right who's going to be doing her best to teach me <laughs> um, to cook a couple dishes we have we are going to do today and I'll let her introduce herself. So. Hi I'm Flicka Lucero and I work for the cultural resource department um, cultural education specialist and I've studied master food preservation for the last three years. And today I'd like to teach some apple fruit leather and ground beef jerky. So we're gonna start um, making the apple fruit leather. We wanna use a good metal pot. Stainless steel is the best because it's non-reactive to the apples. We'll add the apple scent. Okay. And these apples have been these prepared apples, these in advance, yeah? Yeah, I peeled them and placed them in citric acid which just helps with the browning process. Okay, yeah, I noticed they were unusually brown. <laughs> so I just dump them here into the pot? Yep, you just place them all in the pot. And then you put um, one quart of water to one teaspoon of citric acid when you're peeling apples, and that helps with the, them turning brown. We're gonna add the half cup of water. Okay. And we'll add one to two tablespoons sugar. I'm using uh, the stevia sugar. You're welcome to use regular sugar. But or we're going to use packets. the packet. All right, hey, I'm, I'm on my way to becoming a master chef already, yeah. or master preserver. We'll heat them up for five to 10 minutes to get the apples nice and soft. So at five minute mark, we'll mash them with a the potato masher and then stir them again, and they'll be ready to go into the blender and then we'll make our fruit leather. So I'm gonna add a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Just like I always wanna slowly yep. kind of drizzle it over. Sprinkle oh, just, it over. Yeah, sprinkle it in there. It's all gonna get mixed in. And then we're, we could try nutmeg too, much smaller. Yeah, even that, yeah, nutmeg, yeah. nutmeg is strong. Maybe try, yeah, Maybe half just of try a quarter. sprinkling it up, maybe just a little bit of cinnamon and apples. It's like like a, apple pie flavor. They must have like evolved together or something because they just taste so natural with each other. So is fruit leather like the same as like the fruit roll-ups that you get at the store and stuff, or is this a little different? Yeah, this, this is the same, this the only thing is that so you know what you're putting in it. So we're at, oh, five minutes now. So okay. now we're going to get the potato masher and mash those apples up. Okay. So that's pretty good. Now we'll put that in the sink okay. for you. We'll make it easier to clean later. All right. Because of the sugar. <laughs> so that will bring it over here to the the blender. blender. Okay. Just scrape it all in there. And you want to do a liquefy. If they had a puree, we would use that, that setting. We'll do it so it's the consistency of applesauce. Check it. Oh, steaming. Looks oh, like yeah. baby food. Baby food yeah. <laughs> we'll set that aside here and we're going to get our, um, get we'll get our hydrator. hydrator ready. Oh, okay. So we're going to use today the Nesco food dehydrator. For this setting for fruit, we wanted the kind of lower setting. So we're going to use it at the 116 Fahrenheit degree. The higher degrees are for beef jerky and um, other things that you need a higher temperature for food safety. And then we're putting this press and wrap, which is kind of like saran wrap over the top. Yeah. Presumably so it doesn't, so the sauce doesn't leak down in the lower trays, right? Yes. For this one, we're just going to kind of leave the hole open. Make sure we cover the whole tray and leave a little lip there on it. 
just so everything doesn't fall to the bottom. Just like a big hole or? Yes, we want to leave air to get. Just enough out. for the air to kind of circulate it. Is that good? Yeah, and then we'll want to press this. Nice thing about pressing seal is that you can press it together and it'll kind of make it sealed so that the liquid doesn't get everywhere. Okay, and you just pour it out, huh? Make kind of a crushed apple donut. I'm gonna get a get a new one, get a new spatula. Oh, you can lay that out if you want more. Spread it out nice and thin. Yeah, we're gonna try and get it to an even thin layer. Is it better to like push it out towards the edges? Yeah, and okay. spread it out. And like icing a cake. Yeah, I have not done that in years. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So now we're gonna take it and just kind of tap it. I don't know if you're um, if you ever learn like when you put a cake in the pan and kind of oh yeah yeah smash it on the counter and get all the air bubbles out. And if you need okay. to kind of tilt, you just want to kind of avoid the too thick in certain spots because. It, this part will be done and this part will okay. it won't be it's a lot better yeah i mean i wouldn't i wouldn't it's know close. <laughs> my first time so i was like okay well it looks good to me so we're gonna place that in here and then we'll put the lid on plug it in and we'll set a timer so in about 45 minutes, we'll take off the lid and we'll move the tray down to the next spot. We'll, we'll rotate those. And then every half an hour, you'll keep doing that. And that just to make sure that it's getting even because some of the heat might go through the hole and be coming back up. So just make sure that it's evenly. And we can also turn it. Okay. And Good. to check that when it's done, you're going to fill it and it, it's going to be sticky to the touch when it's not done. And when it is done, your fingers won't stick to it anymore and it'll feel like leather. And so that's when it's ready leather. to go. Yeah. Also, if you don't have a, a food dehydrator at home, you can also use a baking pan with a sheet of parchment paper on it. And you'll just put it into your oven at your lowest setting, which is typically about 170 degrees. And you place it in the oven and you can use like a, a wooden spoon is what I did. And you'll want to place it in there with a small spacing about there. And that's how you dehydrate in your oven. So this is what about 30 minutes into the cooking process. As it cooks, it's going to get a little lighter and more transparent in color. Then we have the finished product over there. We have in our bowl some ground beef. And from what I've been told, if you do this, you want to pay attention to the fat content on the ground beef. This is about, what, 93%? 93% yeah. and 7% fat. Some of the ground beefs you'll see in the grocery store, if you don't pay attention, some of them will be like, 70 percent and then 30 percent fat so pay attention to the label on your ground beef for the fat content and the, the less fat the better yeah right? and, and you can use venison elk meat deer meat is really good for this as well okay so with this we're going to go ahead and uh, we'll add all of our seasonings into one bowl and then our liquids into another bowl okay so, so these are the seasonings here yeah for the seasonings you can we all, always want to have a salt um, that just helps with preserving it yeah. and curing it. So a tablespoon, I take it, because you have the tablespoon now? Yeah, we're going to use, um, that's Italian seasoning. Any, like, you can use Italian onion, garlic. Um, you can add chili powder, chili flakes, any kind of extra seasoning that you want. About half a tablespoon, okay. just to taste. Okay. How much black pepper are we going to add? We're going to add a tablespoon. Tablespoon, okay. 
to be nice and spicy. And um, just for flavoring, like if you want to add the granulated, we use granulated um, rather than garlic salt. And also for the onions is either fresh chopped onions or onion powder. So we don't add more salt to the, the recipe. Okay, tablespoon chopped onion, not really a tablespoon. And then we have the garlic powder. Tablespoon of garlic powder. And you can, if you don't like it really flavorful and spicy, you can do half a tablespoon, quarter tablespoon. And, and then the salt. Here. How much salt we're gonna add? So about a quarter to a half a tablespoon. Stir that all up, mix it. That way once you pour it onto the ground beef, it's already mm. mixed and you're just mixing it into the meat. It smells good. And if you like spice, you can add chili powder, cumin. Just maybe a couple dashes of chili powder. So there's the crushed red pepper. If, or you can actually, if you don't want to mix it in, you can put them on top, like some cracked black oh, pepper and in. pepper flakes in there. There we go. Soy sauce. So we're just going to throw this in with the... Uh, first, we'll um, sprinkle the seasonings onto the ground beef. Okay. Just kind of spread it all over. It's always good to mix it so that when you put it on the ground beef, all you're doing is combining it into the ground beef. And you won't have any clumps of certain flavors. Mm, it smells good. Doing that. Got any red seasoning or stuff. I'll just pour it in there and then you can kind of like smash the, the redder parts and you can like tear it open and get it all mixed up good in there. Yeah, just mix it, make sure it's mixed thoroughly. That way it's your jerkies all taste the same. Once you get the seasoning like incorporated in there pretty good, then you can just, we'll add the soy sauce. Yeah, that looks good. And then we'll kind of put some holes in it with our fingers, and that way the liquid will kind of mix in there good. Okay. Turkey gun. When I first heard about it, I thought people were kidding when they said to go get a jerky gun. This I pre sanitized. Um, so everything before you use it, you want to make sure sanitize it with uh, warm, soapy water. So now we're going to. Um, we have two options. We're gonna use the jerky gun, and so we'll just start using the fork. And fork is the easiest way to get the meat in there. Yeah, just put like a spoonful at a time and feed it in there. Push it down. You save me just a little tiny piece. Yeah, you have to really keep pushing it down. Huh? Just screw this top right on there. Yeah, at first you gotta kind of push it down and then turn it. There you go. Pump it up and it'll get tighter. Oh, okay. It'll tighten before it starts coming out. Yeah. Should see it okay, yeah, get, it's tight getting now. ready. Yeah. Now you just wanna kind of start in one section and kind of go and once you start, go keep moving the gun, otherwise it'll start to curl up on you. Helps oh, so kind of keep yep. pulling the trigger. Yep. Then you can go a little, a little faster. There you go. Come out. Yeah. Yeah. Can... Well, I see it goes really quick. Yeah, it does. For some reason I thought the apples would be quicker. And the jerky would take more time. So from once that you're there, then you want to take the lid off. And you could just pull those off to break up. I just took my fingers. Oh, yeah. And you can just push it through. Because there's still. still probably quite a bit in there. You just tear those off and push it out. You can either score it with a knife or a fork. Double handed. You just kind of score it. 
So you'll have your portion sizes. You don't have to break it in half. It just helps when you, when it's dry, it'll just snap right apart. And if there's any pieces like these that are curled up, just kind of move it around, flatten them out a little bit. Get that out of the way. And if you don't um, purchase a gun or you don't have one on hand, you can also flatten it out. Use a rolling pin or a glass cup or anything you have and just roll it. You can write, use a, um, a baking sheet or a roaster pan, which I like the roaster pan because all of the extra oil just drips right down away from the jerky. Okay. You can just score that. You can make this into actually wider pieces if you like. And then from there, just transfer it right over. Quickly flip it over. There we go. There you go. And there you go. And then you'll put it into a preheated oven at 170 with the door propped open with a wooden spoon handle. And you would cook this uh, for two and a half hours and then check it, dab any excess grease off of it and flip it over if you're able to with the spatula. And then you would uh, set your timer for another three hours and then check it for doneness about every half an hour after that if it's not done at that time. This one here, the dehydrator, you would put in and this takes anywhere from three to five hours. So about three hours, you would check it, dab any oil, turn it over, give it about two more hours and then after that, check it every half hour. And to know it's done, it will bend without breaking and no excess oil would come out when you, when you bend it. This one would have to be at a higher temp. Than the fruit leather, yeah. So if you want to cook them both at the same time, I would try to put it maybe 136. Okay. And then we can put it on the bottom so that the drippings aren't getting on the fruit leather. Okay, so you want me to lift So if you want me to lift up like this very... on top for extra food safety you want to um, heat your oven to 270 degrees in there after dehydrating it for 10 minutes and that just brings the internal temp up to 160 degrees and that ensures that any bacteria or pathogens are are killed in the in the cooking process. And how, how long will like the jerky keep forever? If you put it in a Ziploc bag or a mason jar, like with a, a tight lid, you can keep it in the fridge for up to two weeks. And then if you put it in a freezer bag, you can freeze it for up to a year. So thank you again, Flicka, for showing me and others how to do this. And this, this will be very valuable food in case we ever have another blackout like we did. What we made here is isn't going to have some of the funky chemicals that you're going to get in a lot of store-bought food. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's been made with your own hands, so it's going to be healthy and it's going to be exactly how you want it. And this is ideal food for when we have those situations where we lose power, which doesn't happen very often in Grand Ron, but it can happen. Yeah. And it, earlier this year, it caught us all off guard. So this is a good, good way to be prepared. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Aimasu. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm getting applause in the room here. So that, that was, that video was a lot of fun to make. It, it took a lot longer than oh, okay. what is represented in the, um, in the video. Oh God! Thanks, thanks, Chris. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> you can stop okay. that one and restart if you want. No, no, I'll just edit it. Okay. I'll try to edit it anyway. Okay. okay. So I was just explaining to someone that I'm still not entirely Zoom literate and the next, the next video in my YouTube queue just came up. That was actually the cooking video from last year that you guys heard. That was the one I made with my iPhone. So I promise you when I said the video quality increased substantially this year, I, I wasn't kidding.
but that that was a lot of fun to make and like i said it was uh we were actually in that kitchen for close to two hours so it uh it took a while and the food took a lot longer than that to make but trust me it was really good and i believe that's that's the exact that's the exact type of food you want to fall back on again when we when we have these emergency situations and i think within that vein now would probably be a good time for us to give away another jerky gun because i think everyone got to see how it works and i until that day, I did not know, it never occurred to me that you could make beef jerky with hamburger, but evidently you can. And, and it's good for little kids. And yeah, I, I, someone did tell me while we were watching that video that my, uh, my mask kept slip, slipping below my nose. I don't know what to say, you know, <laughs> happens to all of us. But, okay, so we have a jerky gun. And this one includes some black pepper and garlic spice mix. So we're gonna draw a name. There's, there's still a few names left. That one is gonna go to This is another name that I'm gonna struggle with. Catherine Kilmberg. Are you are you on here, Catherine? I don't think she is, but either way, she signed up. Okay. She signed up, so we will seek her out and let her know that she won a jerky gun. And this next prize is gonna be one that I know some people are really gonna be eyeballing it. It's the one that I kind of referred to as the zombie apocalypse kit. It, it's, uh, again, it's just kind of an outdoorsy, camping kind of situation. Yeah, someone's someone's making the wide mouth emoji. But it's it's pretty cool again for those outdoor camping situations. Includes includes a flashlight and a flint for starting a fire and rope and all the things you need when you're in those situations. So that one is going to go to We already did, yeah, okay. <clears throat> there are some duplicate names in here. Amanda Wilson. And I'm not sure if she's on here or not, but she works right here in the tribe. If I'm not I am, mistaken. thanks, Dad. Oh, are you? Okay. Oh, hey, yeah. Thank you. You, <laughs> you won the zombie apocalypse. Just kidding, but um, very, very useful, very useful yeah, thing. Thank you, that's a cute. We just moved into the forest, so that's perfect. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> we need awesome. it. Cool, thank you. Well, thank you for joining us tonight. <clears throat> so before we start giving away the rest of these prizes, I just wanted to make sure that if there, if anyone online didn't have any comments or questions that they wanted to, offer up. Um, yeah, I realized that we forgot to enable the chat feature, but hopefully people aren't too shy. And keep in mind that, so this this is being recorded. And I'm sorry. I have a question. Um, this probably goes to Francine because okay. the food they're handing out those um, frozen apples. Can we use those to make the um, fruit jerky? The fruit leather, you mean? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So those frozen apples that you received from us already have like the sugar and the cinnamon. You could just cook them down like Flicka shared in the video. And then you would uh, liquefy it and then put it in your dehydrator. Okay. All right, cool. Awesome. <clears throat> so what should we start giving away? Or did, I'm sorry, did anyone else have anything they'd like I said, we're going to record this. Uh, we'll, it'll be on YouTube. The, vi the videos individually will also be on YouTube. And we do have resources that we're, we're ready to share, like, like Carly alluded to earlier with, with Oregon State and their, their microgreen, microgreen program and classes so people can have their own vegetables and spices. And yeah, we do have, okay, 
as I stated earlier, the theme is when we are without electricity. So what we have right now is when there's a power outage, we have a, a butane stove here, brand new one. Just bought it earlier in the week. Yeah, yeah, I see some people are excited. That's good, that's good. Uh, then a little bit of fuel for you. And then this two cup camp set, cooking camp set. So very useful thing in one of those emergency situations. So I'm gonna dip into my bowl here and draw out a name. And we have, okay. <laughs> Sorry, those the, those of us organized it. <laughs> Alexandria Warren Masters, are you on? Nope. No, no. Okay, well. Okay, she works here. Well, she'll be. Hopefully, she'll be very pleasantly surprised when she hears about this tomorrow morning. And what else do we have here? We got a few other things. You want to set up soft box stove? Yeah, okay. This, this is different. It's cool. So this is basically like an outdoor wooden cook stove. I think it's I think it's enamel. Um, but it's it's Perfect for outdoor, doesn't need any electricity. You just need wood. It's called a, a Sasquatch cook stove. So that will go to, oh, somebody's re-entering the room here. Getting low on names, so people's odds should be pretty good. Oh, Tracy Meyer. Yeah, everyone, everyone knows Tracy. Oh, my grandson, Timothy, is yelling from the other room. Yay. Is so, he? yay. Thank you, Chris. No problem. And, and uh, there's a woman behind you. Is that Francine Ambrose? That is Francine. She's, she's here in the room. Grandma, that was my mom. Yeah. That was your mom yelling? Yeah, that was my mom. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you. That's my mom yelling. Uh, what else we got? So, you want to do well, this? Well, this stove, and I'm pretty excited. Jeez, okay. Tim. So, okay. Actually, this is kind of heavy, but uh, everyone has used one of these at some point. If you were taking camping, this is like a classic Coleman stove runs on propane this is almost the grand prize two tanks of propane and a cook set for two again no electricity camping emergency ice storm kind of situation prize and that one is going to go to i'm just going to mix it up Oh, two of them are sticking together here. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce this. Veronica Gaston. Ga, ga, Veronica, yeah. Veronica Gaston, yes. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate your enthusiasm, too. <laughs> like I said earlier, go Ducks. Yeah, go Ducks. Okay, so we got one more thing. No, we have two. Two, okay. So we have, we can choose between the Floss Christmas tree. Okay. Or the Instant Pot. Why don't we do the Christmas tree? All right. It's, uh, you don't say how tall it is. Well, it's Christmas tree. For those, for those who haven't put up their Christmas tree yet. And it has a fake snow. And it has fake snow on it. I know it's not really food related, but we think it's a cool prize. And that's going to go to. Okay. 
I should have scoured through the name so none of us participate, none of us hosting it can win it, but. Build the excitement. Okay, that's going to Danae Towner. Oh, nice. And I saw you were on earlier. I think she's on. Yes. Yay. Thank you. All right. Do you have a Christmas tree yet? I have two, but I can use three. Okay. <laughs> good. Good. Okay. I so, like your enthusiasm. Yeah. All right. So one more thing. And these are very popular. An air fryer. I wouldn't be surprised if half the people participating already have an air fryer, but if you don't have one, they are really, really useful. Like it's not some trendy new age kind of food thing. Like they're actually really cool. I have one. I use it more than I thought I would. And it's a, it's a good price. And so that is gonna go to Linda Olson. Are you still on Linda? Well, she's not, she's gonna be pleasantly surprised, I think. So that kind of does it for our prizes. Although, I, as I stated earlier, we do have bags and seed starter kits and sprouting lids for and everyone and cookbooks. and cookbooks for everyone. So if you participate and you didn't win, you just need to go down to Iskam Muckmuck House and you'll, you'll get one of those bags. And I see Flicka, you have your hand up. Oh yeah. Hey, Chris, uh, that video was fun. It came out pretty good too. Yeah, um, yeah, I wanted to ask you how your beef jerky and, and fruit leather came out that you took home to cook. They were good. They were good. Spicy. Do you have any left? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I want to. I want to try. I want to try making it on my own. Um, but yeah, no, they were. They were good. So, and thank you for helping us make that video. so oh you're welcome sorry that's my grandson <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah we we've had we've had other kids appear on camera tonight so i wanted to show um at the food pantry um we do have some deer and elk and um bear burger in so if you'd like to experiment and make your own beef jerky you're welcome to get some deer elk or bear burger from us as well all right, cool. Thank and you. And I don't know if anybody knows when the food box for, is tomorrow. The food for, for, yeah, I'm really happy. What? Food box is tomorrow? Yes. So the food pantry will be open Friday tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're open Wednesdays and Fridays from 10 to 2. Thank you so much. All right. And what we will what we will do as a follow-up to this, we will send out an email because Flicka, Flicka did provide us with the recipes that we cooked in the video. And we will also include in that email some of the links that Carly talked about through Oregon State University for those of you who are interested in growing your own microgreens. And again, I, I've been doing a lot of talking. I hope that if anybody has anything to say or ask, um, please go, go ahead, um, if not, I'll wish everyone a, a good a good evening. But thank you all for participating. We we do hope that we can get we can do this again and get back to our in person meetings, community conversations. They're they're much more interactive and they're fun. Um, but you know, Zoom and vi the videos are also fun as well. I, I I've enjoyed making them. And did you have something, Michael? Langley. Yeah, I just wanted to say uh, this is my first meeting that Chris has done for this that I've attended, and I'm really impressed. And, you know, I have to listen to him a lot anyhow during the day, but I think he does a good job on this. 
And, and honestly, I'm really proud that he does do this because this is the type of um, community commitment that I think is important, especially from leadership. So kudos to our vice chair, Chris. You know, this is being recorded, right? So <laughs> I do. You can't, you can't deny saying that now. So <laughs> we second that, Chris. I yeah, mean, okay. you're, you're always there, man. You're Thank always you. you do this every year and it's it's really just fantastic what you're trying to put forth and are succeeding well, I'm, at. I'm a food i'm a food nerd so i i like doing it and i i, I hope we can produce more of those cooking videos because they were fun to make and i wouldn't be surprised if you see more people go out and try and prepare what flicka showed me on that video and i wouldn't be surprised if more people reach out and learn want to learn more about smoking salmon and how the tribe does it so yeah she really carried that video i thought yeah. Oh. Yeah, she did. <laughs> Jeez, man. Party, talk about a parting shot. Well, you know, yeah. you said it was being recorded, so I have yeah, to okay. mitigate yeah, you gotta, the damage. You gotta un yeah, I got gotcha. you. Mitigation. <laughs> hey, hey, Chris. Yes. This is Simone. I just want to thank you very much. Um, it's really, really cool to be able to connect. Um, I am back East, you know, and it, I miss home. <laughs> so this is really special to me. And I hope in the future that I'll um, continue to be, um, at least if in person, an optional remote, uh, an option for remote, I guess. Thank you. Okay. This is great. Good. I'm glad I'm, I'm glad you're, you're tuning in from back East, Simone. That's, that's awesome. I know it's late there too. Hey, Chris. Yeah. If I can just throw out a plug, um, foodhero.org has hundreds of healthy recipes. And what I what I do is I plug that. So hundreds of healthy recipes, just like those cranberry oatmeal, oatmeal balls, but there's a lot of other great recipes on there and, and good for you, good healthy things that, you know, you can use even when the power's on. So how's that? No, good. <laughs> do that. Good. Can I add to that? Yeah. It's a great website to search by ingredients. So if you have an ingredient you're cooking with and you want a new recipe to try it out, it's great to search by an ingredient. I love that website. When we get a, like a ton of broccoli or cauliflower, you could type that in and it'll give you the recipes that, the, that give you some fresh ideas on how to prepare that. So great plug. Yeah. And we will, we will in, in the email, the follow-up email, we will include the link because, um, there, there will, there will be more information regarding emer local emergency services, and and we we wanted to get some participation from some other people, but it just the the timing of this didn't work out. So we we went with what we had, but we do we do have more information to share about how people can handle these kind of situations and what resources they can reach out to. So keep an eye on your email inbox. We will be sure to follow up with that. And you know this this is just fun. It's it's fun. It's fun giving out stuff. It's fun making videos, and it's I'm I'm honored that you guys took time out of your evening to participate in this. So thank you all. Thanks again, Chris. I really enjoy these too. So we're very informative. Good, good. Thanks, Chris. I wouldn't miss it. All right. Thank you all. Good night. Good night. Thank you. And Chris, I totally missed it when you said where to pick up prizes. Do is that like do I need to come to the government or? Uh, you, you can come by the government to hit up me or you can hit up Francine at oh. ISCOM. I was just gonna take them. Oh yeah, that's right. That's what you said. Okay. If, if you could just come to the pantry, I'll have them first thing in the morning or and then through next week. If you need a different date and time, just call me. Okay, thank you, Francine. And thank you guys. Thank you for this. I wanna show you the number 503-879-FOOD for the pantry. I'll sure tell you. Thank you. You can't do that. Oh, Thank you. shoot. <laughs> Did she say, oh, shit? <laughs>